I'm Alex with Storyline Travel, and today we're going to talk about six things I learned boarding a Royal Caribbean cruise. Hey, we're really glad you're here. So, have you ever uh, cruised with Royal Caribbean? If so, give us a comment below. We decided to take our first Royal Caribbean cruise out of Galveston, which is really near where we are. And this is the experience that we had. Lesson number one I want to share with you actually happened uh, a day or two before the cruise, and that was getting ready and prepping for our trip. So what did we do? We checked our passports and made sure that the expirations um, were, were all good. Um, we didn't miscalculate once we booked the cruise. Um, as we recommend when you book the cruise, you check your expiration. This is a final check. Number one, you make sure that you have that passport in your hand. And number two, you check the dates. It needs to be six months or greater before you set sail. Second, we recommend you download the app for Royal Caribbean. Um, you're gonna use it on the ship. It's gonna become a really good um, companion while you're on board. But it's also a good place where you can check in. And speaking of checking in, um, once you have that app, you're going to want to um, take a look at the cruise contract and sign it or e-sign it. Now you can do this on the Royal Caribbean website or on the app itself, and it will set you up for your set sail pass, which you'll need to check in. And finally, check for any uh, requirements, regulations, check your medical history, anything that may prevent you from cruising. This is a really good time to review what Royal Caribbean requires, maybe what the government or local authorities require, and have that all in order. Any paperwork that you need, go ahead and get that together. So that's our first lesson. Lesson number two, prepare to cruise. Once you've got your app downloaded and you're ready to go, get that app out, pull it up, and start the check-in process. Now, if you're really anxious like I was and you downloaded the app months before it was time to cruise, you'll be given a date when you can check in. And for us, it was approximately a week before. We opened up and went through the check-in process, verified all those regulations from lesson one um, was done, and then we, we signed and we were ready to go. Once you check in, you'll be given the opportunity to get a boarding time. And these boarding times have become very important. It's used for tr crowd control, um, to minimize the amount of time um, that you wait while you get to the port, and it gives the uh, cruise line and the authorities the ability to staff appropriately. So be sure that you select a good time and then show up at that time, not too late and not too early. This is also a really good time to look at add-ins and add-ons to your cruise. So what do I mean? The cruise line, especially Royal Caribbean, will offer you the opportunity to add a specialty dining package where you can eat at one or more specialty restaurants, uh, a drinks package, things like soda, uh, specialty coffees, uh, specialty beverages, um, you know, alcoholic or cocktails. These can be added on um, addition to your, to your cruise fare. In addition, you may add Wi-Fi so that you have access to the outside world while on the cruise ship. And finally, excursions are really a popular thing to look at when you're, you're adding on. What's really important at this time is to realize the cruise lines have given you some discounts on some of these packages, and you could save up to 40% on drink packages, on specialty dining packages, on Wi-Fi packages, compared to what you, you'll see when you get on board. So it's a really good time to look at those add-ins. For excursions, you may not save any money, but you may get to do the more popular excursions or what you want to do because they do sell out. And many times before you board the ship, an excursion may be sold out. We recommend that you take some pictures of your passport on your mobile phone and take a picture or a screenshot of your set sail pass after you check in with that barcode on your phone. What this allows is if there's any trouble when you get into the terminal and maybe Wi-Fi is not that great or cellular connection is not that great, you can use the, the photo to provide the information upon check-in. And finally, this is a good time to print out your luggage tags. 
So Royal Caribbean provides um, at the bottom of your cruise contract a page for your luggage tags and you, you print it on a normal sheet of paper. Um, it tells you how to fold it so that it looks like a luggage tag and then you can actually put it on your luggage and staple it. It will have your um, stateroom number on it and it's really useful for when you check in at the terminal. So be sure not to cut it. It is uh, fold only and if you will um, print that out and and put it on your luggage before you get there. It'll just make your check-in process seamless. Let's talk about lesson number three, arrival at the terminal. So the day has come, you've gotten to the terminal, you're ready to go. Our first recommendation when you get there is to let a porter handle your luggage. This is typically something that the, the terminal, the, the port will provide, sometimes the cruise lines provide, where these uh, men and ladies will come take your luggage for a tip. They'll make sure that your bags get on board and you don't have to deal with your bags until they show up to your room. It could be several hours before you get access to your room, depending on the time that you show up at the terminal. And that means you have to carry your bags all around the ship um, while you're waiting for your stateroom to be ready. We recommend you use the, you use the porters Again, have some cash on hand for a tip, but I've done this several cruises. It was seamless, it was flawless, it was absolutely fantastic. When you arrive at the terminal at your check-in time, uh, Royal Caribbean will have security personnel there to verify your time and that you're there at the said check-in time. It's usually about a 30 minute window. Um, it's important when you check in and select that time, something I didn't mention earlier, I wanna make sure you get, because this almost uh, was a disaster for us. When you check in, your stateroom, um, if you have two people, three people, four people in there, make sure you set a check-in time for each person. Um, for us, in one of our cabins, when the primary person checked in, they didn't scroll down on the app to see that everybody in their room needed to check in. And so by the time the mistake was realized, the check-in time was an hour later than their time. Now, because everyone else in the party had the same check-in time, the, the Royal Caribbean security allowed us to all check in together. But this is something to be aware of. If, uh, if the cruise line's being strict on those return times, they may make that, that one person who didn't check in at the same time wait until their time that, that's available. Once you get to uh, check in and, and enter the terminal, there will be um, some security personnel to make sure that you have your government ID, that you need to check in, you've got your paperwork in order and you're ready to go. And then they will direct you towards the Royal Caribbean crew at the reception area checking you in. When you get to that reception area, you will, you'll show them your set sail barcode that we mentioned earlier, your passport. If you were not traveling with a passport and you're a U.S. citizen on a closed loop Royal Caribbean cruise, meaning you are leaving and coming home to the same U.S. port, there are other documents you can provide, such as a, a state government issued ID and a birth certificate. Um, this is the birth certificate with the stamp on it, not the little baby feet birth certificate. Uh, check with Royal Caribbean on what's allowed. All of this documentation will be done at check-in and then a photo will be taken, if you haven't done it already, for security pur purposes to be used. You're ready to cruise and your first experience with the Royal Caribbean cruise is the pre-cruise pre photo. As we left the reception area, there was a nice uh, backdrop set up with a uh, Royal Caribbean photographer taking pictures of families as they boarded and then once inside the terminal before we um, boarded the ship, there was another backdrop set up that we could go and, um, and get our photos taken. And so at this point, we're, we're at the end of the terminal. We are steps away from the gangplank and we get to lesson number four, boarding the ship. So, um, we use that set sail uh, barcode that we used at check-in to actually get on board. Um, your sail pass isn't available at this point, so you're still using your phone and, and that barcode, and you'll go on to the gangplank. 
Once we got onto the ship, we were met by a crew member that directed us where our muster station was. Now this is for your safety briefing. At this point, you have two options. One is you can, um, you can do your safety video. Um, for us, we arrived at the port right at our time. We walked through security, we walked through check-in, we got a quick picture, and then we were on the boat before we even had a, a second to ourselves. If you get there a little before your time and you're waiting, you can do this video before you go through the check-in process. We recommend that you get to the terminal before you do it, you watch the video. For us, we hadn't watched the video yet. So we got over to our muster station and we had just a quick overview with a crew member and we discussed the safety protocols, putting on the life jackets, where we would go, and then we got our check. If you do the video, you still go to the same location. You wanna see where it is, where that muster station is, and have the crew member verify that you have done your safety training and you're ready to go. Um, a key note for Royal Caribbean, I really like this. For children or adults with special needs who may need assistance getting to a muster station in the event that, that we're called to muster on ship, they give them wristbands that have the, the number or the identifier of the muster station on it. We travel with a special needs adult who, if she was separated from us, would need assistance to get in. And they provided us that wristband. She wore it the whole cruise. And it just gave us, and really the crew, a, a sense of comfort knowing if anything happened, she would be taken to that muster station. And if we got separated, we would meet, we would meet her there. Children, um, the same way, they're, they're given those bands as well. And so we, we really like this that Royal Caribbean does it. It was a great lesson learned for us. Lesson five, explore the ship. Now that your safety requirements are met, it's a good time to go and explore the ship. We think it's great to go see where theaters are. We took a walk down the promenade, which is deck five, and that's where a lot of the shops are. It was good to get our bearings and understand where the front of the ship and what's there, where the back of the ship or aft is and, and what is located there. In fact, for us, aft is where all the dining was. The um, main dining room was on three decks, three, four, and five, aft of the ship and the wind jammer uh, buffet. We had lunch, we was on, um, was on aft but it was at the top on one of the, the higher decks. In addition to other guests coming on and getting uh, set to eat, there are a number of crew members walking around with some pretty high sales uh, pitches uh, in my book. We were approached while we were eating three times by different crew members trying to sell specialty dining to us. We listened to them, told them thank you for sharing that information. We weren't ready to purchase at that time and we would think about it. And so maybe that's why we had three visits, but I felt it was pretty high pressure. I, I thought it was over the top. If you've purchased specialty dining before you got on board, let them know that. Hey, I've already been taken care of. Appreciate you stopping by. Again, the first day, pretty high sales. Um, same could be said about the spa. Uh, if you went to the fitness area, they were really pushing the fitness classes, again, for a fee. Uh, dining, there was a whole table set up for dining packages. And as I mentioned earlier in, in the earlier lesson about adding, about buying add-ons and the, di the discount. We looked to add a soft drink package while we were on board for one of us, just to see what it, what it was. And they were quoting us a price of uh, $35 a passenger a day. It was gonna be $210 for one person just to have sodas um, during, during our cruise. And so you can see, um, you know, that's a pretty good savings if you can get 40% or more off of that. That's something to, to be aware of. This is also a great time to check out the kids clubs. If you have kids, go check them out. They're gonna be open for everyone. They'll, they'll be more like an open house. You can register for different times. Um, if there are capacity limitations, this is a good time to get on the list so that you um, aren't later wishing you had a place for your kids to go and those capacity limits have been hit. So that first day, check out the kids clubs. 
um, ask your questions, and then get them signed up for the time that, that they would like to participate and have fun um, in those programs. And our final lesson learned, lesson six, is getting settled. At some point, um, you'll hear overhead that the rooms are ready. It, they, they shoot for two o'clock. For us, it was early. I think we actually got in around 1.15, which is pretty good. And you can head to the deck where your room is located. Once you get there, um, at the door will be your sale pass. It's a physical card that you can use to um, get into your room. You'll use it for purchases. A uh, credit card is uh, something you do in that um, app sign-on process that's going to be used for, um, for purchases on board. It's also used to get on and off the ship. Um, to get off the ship is important. We can talk about that at a later day, but anytime that you're getting on or off the ship, you need that set sail pass. So this is gonna replace that barcode you used earlier to get on board. Once you get into your room, check it out. Look at the layout. Is the bed configured the way you, you want it? You know, do you have enough hangers? Check the closet. Look at the bathroom and make sure things are working in order. You understand how everything works in the room. Is the AC working? Is the heater working? Believe it or not, we actually needed the heater one day on our cruise in the Gulf of Mexico. It, it did get chilly with rain one day and we needed to warm it up. So check those things out. This is also a good opportunity to find or meet your cabin steward, get to know them. They're gonna be your, your host for the week and they're really important as they make sure that your room is, is the way you need it. That way, if there's something not quite right, you can get that fixed. For us, we actually had an issue. We had a room where we had two solo travelers that were gonna share a room together and the configuration was in a queen size bed. And so we alerted the steward. And after the evening meal, we came back and the room, uh, the bed had been separated to two twins, which actually made their room much more comfortable uh, for them and for the week. And so that worked out really great. Also around two o'clock, luggage will start showing up sporadically uh, between two and 8 p.m. And yes, your luggage may come as late as 8 p.m. So that's, it's good to have a, a day bag, maybe a change of clothes if you need that to get on. But don't panic. Um, if you've left the port and your luggage hasn't shown up yet, it's probably on the ship somewhere and just hasn't quite got there yet. So luggage will, will show up for you. Also in your room, you'll have a, a cruise compass, which is your daily guide to what's going on. It's really good to check this out to make sure um, if there's anything that needs reservations while you're on your cruise, you'll make that at this time. For us, there was an ice show that required reservations. It was no additional fee. It just, um, you just had limited seating, so you needed to make a reservation. And we did that day. We, we called the reservation desk, Pick the time we wanted to go and reserve. By the, the second day, by that, that first full day sea day, we noticed that reservations were all taken. And so anyone that didn't do it on that first day probably got left not being able to see this fantastic ice show. So you want to take a look at that. Also check for other activities, things that really interest your family. This would be a great time to um, find out, you know, where's that trivia that you'd like to uh, be a part of? What about getting on the flow rider and learning how to surf? Um, when will the rock wall be open? And you'll get to see those, especially on the sea days. Those activities will, will become important for you and your family. It's a good time to look at your sea pass card and find out where you'll be dining and at what time. For us, it was deck three and we had the early dining. And it also told us our table number. And we used that the first day to check in. Once we knew where it was, each evening we had a set early time. We just went right to our table and there was no waiting for us. We were able to get right in. If you do the My Time Dining on Royal Caribbean, then this will be a good time to, uh, if you haven't already, start looking at making your dinner reservations based on those activities and put your name on the list. It's good to have those reservations ahead of time. I know as we finished dinner many nights, we would be walking out to a nice long line of people who hadn't made reservations and were waiting to um, get on a list so that they could have dinner that evening. And finally, 
as uh, as your evening starts winding up and and you're settled in, you're you're started exploring the ship. Keep an eye out on this the time for the sail away party and and head up to the pool deck. It's a fun time of um, waving goodbye to the port, some music, some dancing, just enjoying yourself. This is the official start of your cruise. Once the sail away party is underway, you know you can relax, start eating, and just having fun on your Royal Caribbean cruise adventure. So those are six lessons learned from us as we boarded our ship. I'm curious, did I miss something? Would you include anything in lessons learned? Did you learn something maybe from our experience? You can, uh, you can add a comment below. Let us know if there was anything you thought, oh, I learned that, or hey, why didn't you talk about this? Maybe it was something we didn't experience and it's a good lesson for others to know. Let us know below. Also, we'd love you to give us a thumbs up. Subscribe to our channel as every week we're giving you tips and tricks for family travel from Disney to cruising to exploring the world. And finally, as Storyline Travel, we believe every adventure is a story waiting to be told. Music